Hello, St. Albert the Great, First Communion parents, Father Ed Estock here. I have the privilege of serving as pastor at St. Albert the Great, and it's my privilege and a joy for me to welcome you to this formation year uh, in preparation for your child's reception, or if, as they say, admittance into the Eucharistic table of First Holy Communion. It is the uh, important and uh, greatest step, greatest step that we as Christians can take as to being initiated or integrated into the body of Christ itself, the church. So I want to thank you for uh, bringing your children to Christ in the church and at this important time. I also want to invite you to join your children on this journey. Uh, and it's a journey toward what I'm calling in this Eucharistic revival period in our Catholic Church. It is a journey to Eucharistically shaped faith, Eucharistically shaped lives, and Eucharistically shaped families. And as you may or may not know, the Eucharist, when I'm using that expression, the Eucharist, I am meaning the Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, true God and true man. He, at the table and at the Last Supper and on the cross, he laid his life down for the sake of love. And in the power of God, it was raised up to new life and eternal life. So this is what we call the Paschal mystery, the dying and the rising of Jesus Christ. So if we're going to have a Eucharistically shaped faith, uh, then we would have to have a faith that is shaped like the dying and the rising of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. So uh, what would a Eucharistically shaped faith look like? Well, it would look like one that was not self-centered, but it was centered on the love of others and the service of others. That would be a Eucharistically shaped faith or a Eucharistically shaped heart. I'd like to suggest that you all join me in attempting to build a Eucharistically shaped family. So based on what I said about the Eucharist, we can see that a Eucharistically shaped family would be one that is built upon these values of Jesus in laying down my life for the sake of love, for the sake of the other. That's what the Eucharist is, and that's what we celebrate in the Eucharist, is the dying and the rising of Jesus Christ. And so in our family, we could begin to shape the relationships of our family uh, on that of Jesus in the self-sacrificing love. So this would be a great thing for you to share with your children to help them understand as they are moving toward the Eucharistic table and as they are growing in your family that is beginning to look more and more like the Eucharist. I've been saying to others that this cannot happen in our hearts, in our faith, in our children, or in our family if we do not have a Eucharistically shaped schedule. And that, of course, is talking about Sunday. Sunday Mass and the Eucharist at the center of our family planning, our family schedule, our family priorities. So I'm asking you and challenging you, I guess, that if the Eucharist on Sunday or Saturday night or Sunday is not part of your family schedule, then it is going to be very hard to make it part of the, your family life. And of course, it's going to be very hard for the children to be formed into Eucharistic faith if they don't have a Sunday Eucharist at the heart of their lives. Thank you so much for listening to me. Pray, let's pray for our children. Let's pray for our church. Let's pray for our families that we might be born again into the Eucharist of our God, the Eucharist of Jesus, the dying and the rising of Christ to new life within our hearts, in our faith, in our families, in our parish, and of course, then in the world. God bless you all again.